this movie is meant to be a brief, now a very brief, introduction to rigid body dynamics in Houdini. This is just going to show you a couple of the shelf tools and show you what it's all about. Nothing in depth, like I said in my last video, a little bit of a lot. So this will hopefully give you an idea of what rigid body objects are, how they work, and what they're all about. You can see we have a rigid body shelf, and this is the shelf we're going to work from. And we're going to go to our create shelf, and we're going to control click our grid. And we're going to throw us a grid down there. Now we can remove our construction plane because we don't need it. So now we have this grid, and now I'm going to control click, let's see, let's control click a tube. And let's rotate it 90 degrees in Z, like that. Okay, um, we can raise it up if you want to put it like that right there. And I guess we could shrink it down a little bit, but I do want to make it level with our grid. So now we have this little tube sitting on our grid here. So I'm going to do two things. I'll tell you what, let's remove our grid and let's just control click a ground plane. This will make everything easier because the ground plane is automatically a rigid body static object. Okay, um, if I put a sphere up here and put uh, gravity on it and had it fall it would go straight through the grid unless I turned it into a rigid body object the ground plane is already a rigid body object from the start okay as a matter of fact let me demonstrate that let me bring in a um, sphere and I'll bring it up here now you can see when I hit play nothing happens okay but if I deselect everything I go up to my rigid body shelf and select rigid body object it's gonna ask me what geometry I want to make a rigid body object I'll select this sphere here and hit return now that's a rigid body object and when I hit play you can see that object falls and it hits right on that ground plane because that ground plane is also a rigid body object okay but you're thinking well why is the ball falling and the ground plane isn't falling okay well let's get a new scene and let me explain that so now let's control click a grid and now you can see and then let's, let's bring our sphere back let's bring it up and let's make it a rigid body object like before now when I push play you'll see it'll fall straight through the grid you see that because the grid is not a rigid body object now if I turn the grid into a rigid body object it's gonna fall straight down just like my um, sphere is so we don't want that so in order to stop that we're gonna change the grid into a rigid body static object so hit the static object in the rigid body shelf select the geometry you want to become static and hit return okay now watch what happens now the grid has become a rigid body object meaning it can interact with other things other rigid body objects but it's a static object so it's not gonna fall like the sphere the sphere is not a static object it's just a rigid body object not a static rigid body object so does that make sense okay that's why I went ahead let me remove the grid that's why I went ahead and control clicked the ground plane because I did not as you can see it's automatically a rigid body static object I didn't have to make it one like I did the grid so we're gonna we're gonna start fresh and let's lay down our ground plane okay now let's go back in and let's control click our tube like before and we'll rotate it 90 degrees in the z-axis and we'll lift it up and there we go we have back where we was so now I want this tube to stay still so what are we gonna make it we're gonna make it a static object because I want it to interact with other things in my scene but I want it to stay where it's at so I'm gonna select static object select my tube hit return and now we have a, nothing's happening but we have two static objects in our scene okay so now I'm gonna control click a box I'm gonna lift it up here and we're gonna adjust its size let's make it flatter longer like this and let's bring it down right on top 
of our sphere there. Now I'm going to turn this not into a rigid body object, uh, not into a static rigid body object like we did the sphere or the tube. We're going to turn it into a normal rigid body object because we don't want it to stay still. If we turned it into a static object, it would stick right there. So we're going to turn, we're going to make it an RBD object. We're going to select our plank, our wooden plank, and hit return. Okay, now that's a rigid body object. When we scale forward, nothing's happening because it's just sitting there on top of that tube. Okay, so what can we do to make this um, interact with other things? Well, let's let's add a sphere. Let's add another sphere. Let's let's bring it up here, and let's bring it over. First, let's scale it down, like so. Let's bring it over right here, like this. And we'll bring it down. About right there. Okay, so now I'm going to turn this little sphere into a rigid body object too. So I'm going to hit rigid body object, turn the sphere, hit return. That'll turn that into a rigid body object. When I fall, you can see now. Our plank, where it's not sitting right on, you can see there's a little gap there. So I'm going to move that down a tad. Like that. Now when we play, you can see that ball falls and it hits that plank and it's going to make the plank tip. You see? Because we've made them rigid body objects. And now the plank will, will rock back the other way. Like that. You see? And it'll just sit there and rock and it'll either fall or it'll eventually come to a rest. Okay, you see what's happening there? Let's add something else. Let's add a teapot. So we'll add a, a platonic object and we'll make it a teapot. We'll raise it up here. And we'll bring it over. Down about right there. Now we're going to make it a rigid body object, not a static object, because we want it, gravity to affect it. And hit return. Now that's a rigid body object. Now if you notice, you have a drive simulation shelf. Now these are things that can be um, added to a rigid body object. Gravity, drag, fan force, wind. Or if you want to deactivate a rigid body object, there's a deactivate, okay, or remove, okay. So now we've made this a rigid body object, we've made the sphere a rigid body object, we've made the plank wood a rigid body object, we've made the tube a static rigid body object, and our ground plane is a static rigid body object. And when we play this, you can see the teapot is heavier than the ball, so it in turn weighs the plank down and it brings the ball back the other way. We can play with this by adjusting the ball. We can put it right down here on the plank if we want and hit play. Like that, we can see that now we have a good interaction. It comes down, it rolls all the way down the plank. Let's stop this at about 125. I'll put 125 over here. And we'll hit, put it in real time. Let me zoom around like this. And we'll hit play. As you can see, now we have a complete, quick, rigid body simulation by just using our tools in this rigid body shelf. So let's go back to our rigid body shelf. Again, the ground plane is a static rigid body object, which means things will interact with it. Other rigid bodies will interact with it, but it will stay exactly where it's at. So is our tube, a static rigid body object. Again, it will interact with other rigid body objects, but it will stay right where it's at. It won't be affected by forces and stuff. And our plank, our ball, and our teapot are all regular rigid body objects, which you can apply forces, gravity, you can scale it, and you can go into your, let's see. Here's our auto dot network here. I'll hit L to lay it out, which this is all of our rigid body objects simulation right here. Here's our rigid body solver. 
if we want to go in our collision passes and we can go over this in a more in-depth video but these are where you get down and control how the rigid body acts these are just stock settings if you want more gravity or forces to be more or you want it to kind of forced over to the right instead of straight down this is where all this is took care of in your static solver your rigid body solver and um, and here's our gravity node which you can um, afford affect your gravity and stuff and of course you can add other drive simulation tools so that is a quick brief introduction to rigid body objects set yourself up a little scene like this and you can begin to see the modeling possibilities um, you could model a price is right game Plinko where the ball is sliding down and hitting all these little stubs sticking out of the wood you know and it goes into a certain slot or rocks tumbling down a mountain or there's so many possibilities that this opens up from modeling um, that this video might help you get started so thanks for watching guys and uh, we'll see you in the next one